This is Ashton Marcus, and I'm on location at Chance Theater for their presentation of A Bright New Boise. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm with Casey Long. I'm one of the founding artists here at Chance Theater, and I'm playing Will Cronin in A Bright New Boise. Will is a man uh, who's been fractured recently, and he is hoping to reunite with the only family he has left, which is a boy that he put up for adoption at a very young age. And so he comes into Boise and gets a job and attempts to reconnect, but it's his past that's going to connect, catch up with him. And it's how he deals with that and the beliefs and the, all the baggage that he carries. Yeah, you're also the managing director here, aren't you? That's right. I am also the managing director. I've been here since uh, since we opened, basically, and uh, this is uh, <laughs> my second time performing our new space here at the Betty Aiken Theater Arts Center. First time for the first show on the Cripe stage, which is very cool. It's very much an honor, and uh, it's been really amazing, like being able to tackle such an incredible role like this. And balancing it is, you know. It's tricky sometimes, but totally worth it, and uh, just grateful to have the opportunity. So why did you decide to do that? Because I don't hear a whole lot of managing dir uh, directors who actually go out there and act. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing, is that our entire staff are all artists. You know, we all either act or direct or, you know, design, and that's just sort of how we started off, is that we wanted a home to do our art, and then we all sort of took on our different roles, and people had strengths in different areas. I mean, I jumped around from technical director to production manager to marketing director, and then finally it's like managing director, and so I've been in that position about six, seven years now, and uh, I don't know. I can't speak for other managing directors, but I, I'm here to create and do art, just like uh, basically everybody else here. So what do you think about this play, anyway? I think this play is amazing. I think this play is really incredible. Samuel Hunter definitely deserves the MacArthur Fellowship that he got. Uh, this show takes a hard look at someone that you think you know when you start the show. Like you, th As soon as you find out what his secret is, you're like, oh, I know who this guy is. But you can't help but hopefully still empathize with him. This show's a lot about empathy. It's a lot about taking a more nuanced look at the people that you see in the media and the people that you think you know and that you understand, much like in his other works like The Whale or A Great Wilderness where you meet someone and you think you know this person but you find all these other layers and all this other pain and hopefully at the end of the show you're a little bit more open to who they are and that they are a full human being. I actually read an article on the internet about, you know, they were actually talking about Christian um, films. Mm -hmm. And there's there's a, a strain, there's actually a genre of Christian films out there. The artist said, you know, they're not against the thought of it, or religion or anything like that, because it is a deep philosophical question, which demands a lot of respect, as it will all deep philosophical questions. They just said it was just poorly done, because they're very one-dimensional, very, mm. very optimistic. Hmm, well, that's interesting. Uh, they're talking about, like, any specific movies I haven't seen in? Well, no, no. Uh, basically, uh, the genre out there, where you oh. know, you know, basically, where this kid has troubles, they go to church, and then suddenly everything's all happy ending. You know, like that. <laughs> it's just a little too bland. You a might too say. easy. Is, uh, this one, I it, obviously, it's different. This one, what, what do you think? You think this one's very different from that, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think the show is about like trying to convince people one way or the other about believing in God. It just shows not about that at all. It's about this collection, this group of people who work in a Hobby Lobby, who are trying. To to connect and trying to find themselves and it's about their interaction so I wouldn't really even even though my character is a religious person I wouldn't put it in like the same realm as like Christian film or like anything that was trying to persuade you one way or the other about your faith it's not this show's not about that the, the what it is about I mean it doesn't tackle the, I feel it does fairly tackle the, the question the, the question of basically you know uh, like one person goes to a Lutheran church mm -hmm. another person goes to an evangelical right. church different types actually delves a little bit about you know whether one's poli political whether one is more faith based uh what do you think? Do you think it? Do you think? Do you think it respectfully handles the the, the conversation? 
I think it absolutely handles the conversation. It's a conversation, though, about who we are. It's a conversation about different belief systems, about like do who, what we believe in, does that define who we are? Because my character believes in something strongly, there's the Leroy character who believes in something very strongly, the manager character, uh, Pauline, believes in something very strongly, and then there is Alex who doesn't know what to believe in, that he actually has conflicting forces telling him, well, you shouldn't believe in this, and you should only believe in this. And then where does that leave him? It leaves him almost without an identity altogether. And so there's this whole idea also about like, there's religion, there's also art, there is also corporate greed, you know, there's capitalism, there's so many things that someone can choose to believe in. And is that who you are? Or is that just part of who you are? And without it, who are you? I think is a big question in the show. Another thing, the the ending of the story left a question. Mm -hmm. it, like n none of the questions were answered. And again, when, when we go out for entertainment, it is kind of nice to actually go and have this fairy tale where there's a nice happy ending. Resolution, <laughs> it just answers. Oh, that's why. That's why we have problems. That's the answer. Okay, finally. I, so, so, what do you think about that? <laughs> well, I think the ending is definitely provocative. It ends on the moment of action that Will is presented with a very specific choice to make, and he is treated to this unexpected moment and when that moment is done he is really left with this deceptively hard decision to make I think depending on where you lean you know in your faith and such there's people who are like well clearly you're going to do this and there's other people going I don't know and that's exactly what's going on in Will's mind is there, there are stakes like through the roof for him and where does he go and does he have a little bit of doubt now, or is he resolved, or what? what is going on with him? I mean, I have my own opinion, but I'm not going to tell you what that is, but what is that very next action? I'm hoping I'm leaving the audience with, like, he's about to do something, what is it? And have them sort of decide what their opinion of what, that dis of what he does next defines, like, what they think of him now, you know? And that hopefully they can remember in the beginning of the show because some things are revealed that maybe you don't like Will so much towards the end of the show. But hopefully you remember at the beginning of the show how nice he was and how relatable he was and that you keep that in mind when you're thinking about what happens next. Okay. Well, I think this is very artistic and I, I do recommend that people actually can go to it. It's, it's a good conversation to have. It's a good, it does open up your mind to a lot of things. Well, thank you very much. And I think that it's also because we have discussions after every performance too, you know, it's come down, talk to us, challenge us, ask us what we think. We want to have that conversation. That's part of why we're here, you know. Come for the stories, but stay for the conversations. And I hope a lot of people come out and see it. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Hi, I'm Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm with... Alexander Bueno. I uh, went to an artsy high school called the Visual Academy of Foreign Arts, and um, then I studied Meissner Technique over in Joanne Barron, and I've been with this uh, wonderful company since 2001, so been, yeah, been here a long time. I played the role of Anna in uh, Bright New Boise by Sam Hunter. She's just this wonderfully awkward, nervous woman who's just trying to find some kind of connection, some kind of excitement in her life, and the only place that she can have that feels like home is the, unfortunately, the um, break room at the Hobby Lobby feels more like home than it does at home. You know, she's ridiculed for reading books, and so uh, she just, like I said, wanted to find, wants to find someone to reconnect, to connect with, and to make, you know, friends with and such. What do you think about this play? I think it's beautifully written. I think there's so many um, wonderful themes to it, you know, uh, religion and adoption and people who are just in, um, not comfortable with themselves and, you know, and it's, it's great because it has empathy for people who are certain stereotypes that people tend to judge, but you actually feel for these characters and, and I think Sam Hunter's written them very, very beautifully. Yeah. Well, acting-wise, I do like dark comedies because it, it provides a lot of drama, a lot of acting. And what do you think about that? I love dark comedies. I think, like like you said, it provides comedy and drama, which are essential. You know, I think I think heavy dramas, you just want something to release that tension. So when you throw in a little comedy in there, it's kind of like lets the audience breathe a little bit, and just be like, oh, okay, 
yeah. I'm okay. I can laugh now. I can be okay. So, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Well, thank you so much. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm with... Hi, I'm Karen Jean Olds here at the Chance Theater. I am originally from Montana. I grew up in Butte, Montana, a little copper Irish mining yeah. town up there. And then I, uh, after that, I went to University of Montana in Missoula, Montana. And then I came out actually just down the road here at UCI for grad school from 2004 to 2007. And then I've been professionally working in Los Angeles ever since. Yeah. Wait, and which character did you play? Uh, Pauline tonight, yeah. Pauline has uh, been born and raised in the Idaho area her whole life. And um, she's worked just about every corporate job under the sun. And now she manages the... Hobby Lobby here, and um, she's kind of a take no guff kind of gal. She kind of, sort of, a dramaturgically services as kind of comic relief in this story, but also a sort of the kind of grounding force behind um, uh, kind of the, uh, the giving people the what for and holding the fort down. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, of all the characters in the play, I think yours had the least amount of problems. Yeah, she's pretty stable. Yeah, yeah, she sort of services as, that's kind of what I was saying. She kind of holds the fort down, sort of, she's kind of the, um, the epicenter of it to kind of roll around. There kind of needs that stability within it, and definitely Pauline services that, yeah. <laughs> do you like that kind of role? I mean, a lot of people would prefer a more challenging role where you can do more acting, you have more conflict, you have more drama. Um, yeah, it was, I'd say definitely as an actor it had its challenges for sure um, so I'm I was very satiated with working on the piece for sure in that regard but um, yeah no it was it was it provided enough conflicts for me I think to, to feel like I could sink my teeth into something a uh, uh, we discussed this in one of the other interviews earlier um, the hunters work actually is so technically difficult in terms of um, the wording that it that alone was an interesting thing to do dig into sort of the, the technical uh, verbiage of his piece was actually totally cool to work on, yeah. So what do you think of the play? I love the play. I love Hunter's work um, in general. I'm from Montana originally, so I find his concepts very... Um, Right on. I think there. I think he nails that sort of uh, greater landscape, um, expansive place, and then these sort of microcosms within it, and, and how things can can how the conflicts can arise within these these small town places. And I, I think he really nails, nails it. So I've loved working on his work for sure. Yeah. Never had a chance to do it before. It's my first time. So. Yeah, I, I see a lot of the problem as being common problems of everyday people because in, in a sense if you are more of a, uh, a center uh, an inner city kid you know an African American kid you'd have your own problems but you look at you look at the, the white kids in the Midwest it's like they probably have no problems all they have to do is study you know work on the farm when they grow older or get a job at the Kmart they're, what a house there only costs 30000 so they don't have any problems what do you think of that? <laughs> well I think I think it's all relative to where you are I think we are inherently born with our own set of circumstances where we are and um, I think it just I don't I think there are different problems and I think it opens up Pandora's box to wherever you are to your own sort of existential you know circumstances of what your challenges in life are and so um, I, for example I, I, I think that that Alex's character is very interesting because he's he's this very expansive mind this very intelligent kid who who doesn't know how he can explore it in a place like this and feels completely alienated and like nobody understands him at all and really he's probably this this sort of brilliant artist that just you know so I think it is relative to where you are for sure and uh, it's interesting watching these I think that's the interesting part about um, the interesting thing about Hunter's work is exploring those challenges within these places for these kinds of people they're not so surface level you kind of have to dig a little deeper to see what that is and then to to be able to Hunter does a great way of making it totally understandable and relatable that those are real challenges and uh, and the sort of the battles within for each of the characters for sure. 
a little bit of my show. Uh, my show, there are a lot of community theater actors who listen to my show. A lot of students. Uh, any kind of advice you can give them on how to how to you know become better actors? I just say, do your work. Keep digging in. Um, never say no unless you have to. Keep working the chops and keep reading and keep studying and uh, and just go for it. Yeah, don't stop. Because I think th I think that's the challenge I've found in the professional world is that it's difficult when you're coming. You know, it doesn't always. I don't know. You know, it's it doesn't always pay well or it's not supportive. Don't don't let that be a factor. Just keep keep going would be my advice. Yeah, never stop. Never stop. Okay, thank you very much for being on the show. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much for talking to us and for coming. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm with Andrew Guerrero. I've been acting since I was 10. Uh, first show at the Chance Theater. Um, just graduated college and now living in Burbank, uh, Los Angeles, so I can uh, pursue acting there. I played Alex in A Bright New Boise. Alex is a young man who uh, is in the foster care unit. He is currently a paycheck for John and Cindy, his foster parents, and his biological father comes into town to reconnect with him, and that kind of messes, his up, messes him up internally, uh, gives him a lot of confusion about who he is. He's trying to find uh, a, a personal identity on this earth as long, along with a spiritual identity. So. Yeah, so uh, what do you think about this story? Um, I think it's... I think it's a story that invites us all to look through eyes of that, uh, look through uh, less judgmental eyes, uh, to see uh, no matter who you are or what you believe in, that you are a person, and we are all trying to be human in this world, um, and that uh, we can't let um, things like religion or stereotypes define who we are. That's what I would think it means. So what do you think the target audience is for this? Oh, hmm. I would say the target audience for this is probably, I would say, uh, 20, to, 20, to, 20 to on. Um, I think it's a great philosophical show. I think it offers teens and kids and people opportunities to question things like religion and God and spirituality um, and their own identity. I think it's a great, I think it's good for that, that kind of audience who are looking to question things. Yeah, I, I asked you that question specifically because I really didn't think that the, uh, the, the lead character was actually the, the main focus. Mm. I actually thought your character was the main focus because I think your character is the main audience. Oh, really? Yeah. Th that's very interesting. Um, I, I think he, I think Alex specifically has a lot of, uh, everyone has a lot of baggage in this show. I think as far as learning to accept who he is, um, along with accepting who he is in this grand scheme of spirituality. And so, that, I mean, that's a, that's a great observation that, that could be very accurate. I mean, great observation. So, uh, what kind of, a, what kind of a goals do you have for the future? Are, are you planning to go to Broadway? Are you planning mm -hmm. to stay uh, local to the community? Are you, yeah. planning to, are you planning to do this to, as a community theater type thing? Yeah. So my plans for the future are uh, to pursue acting in L.A. film, primarily. Uh, currently up there, uh, hitting the streets, auditioning all the time, uh, trying to book films. and uh, So that's my goals. I'll be uh, currently in L.A. And then also the community theater down in, in Anaheim as well. Uh, so yeah, that's my goal right now. I actually uh, talk to a lot of actors uh, in what I do and all that. And and they tell me it's a very hard job to do. You, you should, really shouldn't do it unless you really know, you, you really love this. There's nothing in your life that you can, you can actually do. What do you think about that? I, I agree. Totally agree. Uh, this is the only career I would do for no pay. Um, I, would, I would just do it. Um, and when I accepted that for the first time, I realized I could do this for pay. Um, and uh, you have to be willing to just do it. All of it. Your soul has to be totally into this. If it's not, then just you know, do community theater and have a great time. And that's not a problem. But if you want to make this your living, you better hustle. <laughs> you better hustle. I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. So when did you decide you want to be an actor? Uh, I think before I was born. I, I, let's see, I think the first, I, I was three years old, my mom said, when I first announced to her that I wanted to be an actor. I, uh, I saw the movie Life with Mikey by with Michael J. Fox, and I knew right then that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to act. I needed an agent and all that stuff. So I've been wanting to act for my whole life, yeah. You know, actually, I ask that question a lot. And I'm trying to define what an actor is, mm. and a lot of them actually start at five years yeah. old. So, yeah. You think you were born different from everyone else? I think I was born naturally curious. 
And I think that's what sets apart artists in general. Uh, a, a, just a curiosity about people and trying to figure out how people think and why people think the things they do. And that's definitely what I, what I have, is a natural, innate curiosity for things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I loved your performance. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm with David Christian Vera. I'm a recent graduate of the uh, South Coast Intensive. They have a summer intensive every summer, and I, I got to be part of that. I was accepted, and I got to graduate from that, which was really exciting. Uh, I went to Saddleback College for a couple of years. I did quite a few shows there. Really had a good time, learned a lot. Uh, and so I finally got to come here to the chance to do my first uh, professional show. Great. And uh, which character did you play? I played Leroy. Uh, could I have a brief synopsis of Leroy? Leroy is Alex's little brother, and in, in many ways he's uh, Leroy's actual father, because he's the one who raised him, because Alex is a, he's not even adopted, he's a foster kid, and so they get, the, they get money from the state, and he's nothing more to uh, Leroy's parents than a paycheck, and so Leroy is like his actual, his only actual family, and so there's an interesting just struggle to see these characters go when Will, the, the biological father, shows up. And so it's almost like two dads battling for custody. So, so what did you think about this play? Uh, this is a very interesting play. I didn't fully understand it when I first read it, but after we started doing rehearsals and stuff like that, I just was like, oh, my eyes were like open to the brilliance of Sam Hunter. Um, and it's, it's just, it's a wild ride. He just takes people that you think you know, and then he turns them up on your head. You, you think you know, you see these people every day in your real life. You see people who work retail, and you think you know them, but you really don't. And that's sort of what the show's about, in addition to all the religious undertones and stuff like that, is that you just, you don't, you don't know people. And so Sam's really good at showing you who these people really are. Yeah. I think one of the, the, the lines that really struck me well was when he says, you think you know a panic attack, you don't know what a panic attack is. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that. You, don't, you really don't know who these people are. Yeah, it's, it's almost exactly like, like, it was like a layered message from Sam. Like, he's, he's a smart guy. He's smart. So, but also, when I go to the theater, basically, so usually I, I, I like to go there. I like the, the fact that sometimes when I go, there's an answer there, and I say, oh, that's why human beings, that's why we yeah. always have problems. That's why when two people get married, they, they, they have, and all you have to do is just do this, and finally, that's, everyone's happy and all. <laughs> but this kind of left a lot of questions. What do you, what do you think about that? Uh, it, it leaves it open and ended in a way that you can kind of fill in the holes yourself. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting because uh, a lot of the things we figured out about the characters aren't in the script, but we kind of you know, drew conclusions. And you kind of have to do that with the ending. Uh, but at the end of it, it's this, it's up to you to kind of decide what happens next. Well, I thought it was very artistic, and I think it's very well worth seeing, and I, I, I liked all your performances. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. <laughs> A Bright New Boise will be playing at Chance Theater from September 25th to October 25th. For more information, go to www.chancetheater.com or theorangecurtainrev.com.